In this video, you will learn how to set up the Geek Vape Aegis unit, either the Mini or Solo model, to use with the Inokin iSub V Mod Take. Hello, I am Michael Mahoney, author of the book More CBD, Less Drinking, available on Amazon. And in that book, I recommend the Geek Vape Aegis and the Inokin iSub V Mod Tank in combination as the best vape devices to use to get started with temperature controlled vaping. These are called box mod units, by the way, and I describe what a box mod unit is in chapter six of the book and why these models are the best of the box mod units out there. This video shows how to set these units up and how to use them, so let's get started. Get out your newly purchased units, both the Aegis Control Unit and the Inokin Tank, but don't turn on the Aegis Control Unit yet until you watch most of this video. Again, this video will show you how to set up either the Solo or the Mini, so get out whichever one you happen to have bought. Now, here are both the Mini and the Solo versions of the Geek Vape Aegis. I described the pluses and minuses of each in Appendix A of the book, but briefly, you can see that the Mini is a little smaller than the Solo. The key difference, however, is that the Solo has a removable battery, while the Mini has a sealed internal battery. So here's the Solo, here's that removable battery, and if you look at the mini unit, you'll see there's no place to insert a battery. It's already in there, and it's sealed. If you want to read more about the advantages and disadvantages of having a removable versus a sealed battery, check out Appendix A in the book. When you first look at the Aegis Control Unit, either model, you'll see that the unit has an LCD screen that is initially blank since the unit is turned off. On both the mini and the solo, there is one big button above that screen. But below the LCD screen, the buttons vary depending on the model. On the Mini, there are two small buttons left and right below the screen. The left one is the minus button, and the right one is the plus button. On the Solo, in contrast, below the LCD screen is one rocker button. The bottom half of that button is the minus button, and the top half is the plus button. Now, remember those names, minus and plus, and remember their locations on the model that you purchased because I will refer to those names often in the instructions ahead. And there are no labels on the buttons themselves, so you kind of have to memorize it. So again, on the Mini, the left one is the minus button and the right one is the plus button. And on the Solo, the bottom half of the rocker button is the minus button and the top half of the rocker button is the plus button. On either unit, that big button above the screen we looked at a moment ago is for turning the unit on and off, and it's also for firing the unit. What I mean by firing is once the unit is on, you push and hold that button when you want to inhale. This fires up the coil, heats and vaporizes the juice, and makes vapor available to inhale. You will release this button as soon as you are done inhaling. However, on a brand new unit, please delay turning on and off or delay firing up the Aegis Control Unit itself. Don't try to do any of that yet. That's because there are some very important setup steps we need to do first, and you don't want to vape using the out-of-the-box settings. After you get a new unit, the first thing you should do is to charge the battery used in the control unit. I've seen many of these units come with a dead battery or a very low one, so get that done before proceeding. As I mentioned, the Mini has a sealed internal battery, so you charge it within the device. The plug itself is under a rubber flap at the very bottom of the unit, as I show here. For the Solo, it does not come with a battery, so you have to purchase that separately. I list where to get those batteries in the book in Appendix A. If you want to charge that battery in the Solo unit itself, then you first have to insert the battery here. Be sure to insert it with the positive end of the battery at the top. Insert that end first. On these special batteries, the positive end has, has a slightly narrower terminal than the negative end. It's a little hard to tell the difference, but the, the positive will be a little bit narrower, as I show here. So after you insert it, screw the cover back on the battery, insert portion. And then once the battery is inserted, the charging plug is located here on the unit. 
Now, once that's in the unit, for either model to charge an, an internal battery, both models accept a standard micro USB jack and charger like that on an Android phone or on a Kindle. The end of these jacks look like this. Now, both models come with a charging cable, but they don't ca come with the charging brick itself. But that's okay, you can plug that cable into any charger that you happen to have, any one that accepts an older style USB cable, the type A is the official name of these older styles. They are pretty standard. A lot of power strips have those charging slots and you can use them or use a powered USB port on your computer. Again, both models allow you to charge an internal battery. But with the Solo, it's much faster to charge its removable battery in an external charger. Plus, you'll want to have an extra battery charging while you're using the Solo. So an external charger is really the way to go if you get the Solo. That's the whole point of getting it. And I described which battery to get and which charger to get in the book in Appendix A. But when charging the batteries internally, either on the Solo or on the Mini, note that there is a battery charging indicator in the lower left corner of the LCD screen of both models. However, you, you won't see that until you turn the unit on, which is a few steps away. We're not going to turn it on yet. So instead of using that charging indicator to tell how fully charged it is, for now, for internal charging, just plug in the device and let the device charge for 30 to 60 minutes and then take the next steps. With external battery charging for the Solo, the charging device has an indicator that will tell you how close to full charge the battery is. Get that battery at least half charged for now. Then take it out of the charger and insert it into the Solo as I showed earlier. After you get the battery at least partially charged and installed if using the Solo, you can add the tank to the top of the control unit. It's pretty simple to do that. The tank simply screws into place. Now, you want to attach the tank before turning on the unit because the control unit needs to have an electronic connection with the tank to make any sense of what's going on when it powers up. It will complain if you don't have the tank attached when you power up the control unit. So attach the tank first. After you attach the tank, here's one common thing people forget to do you need to spin the ring at the bottom of the tank so that the airflow slot opens completely. Every time you screw a tank onto a base unit, you will tend to accidentally close that slot. So now is the time to reopen it. The position of the slot is as I show here. And just open it so that you can see that there is an opening for air to get in. I open it wide open whenever I use the unit. Next, you should prime the tank and fill it. Let's talk about priming first. Priming is important, but you only need to do it once with a brand new tank and coil. Really, it's the coil that needs to be primed, not the tank itself. That means if you ever put a new coil into this tank, you will need to prime it before using it. Priming simply means pre-soaking the coil with vape juice completely before you turn the unit on. If you don't do that, you might burn out the cotton wick material that's in the coil due to the heat being applied to dry material, and you, and you don't want that. The simplest way to prime a new coil in its tank is to fill the tank halfway or fuller with vape juice, and then simply let the assembly sit upright for about 10 minutes. That's it. After 10 minutes, it is primed. I show you how to fill the tank in a minute, by the way. There are more complicated ways to prime the coil. These are ways that experienced box mod device users might tell you to do this. They involve disassembling the tank and carefully dripping vape juice right into the absorbent portion of the coil assembly. That works faster, but it can also lead to juice leaking out the vent slot. So if I were you, I'd stick with a simple method of filling and waiting. All box mod tank models fill a bit differently. For this Ionokin i sub v tank, you must first remove the cap from the top of the tank to do this. The cap on this tank is the entire metal top part of the tank that sits above the glass. So all of this right here is the cap. Again, you will remove the whole top assembly above the glass. Loosening this cap can be a little hard to do at first if it's screwed on tight. 
So with one hand, firmly squeeze the glass portion of the tank to hold it steady. Then with the other hand, grip the rim of the metal top of the tank. But by the way, don't grip the mouthpiece, that part here, otherwise that'll screw off separately. What you want to do is grip the metal rim and then rotate that rim top counterclockwise. At first, it will feel like nothing is happening, but after a little effort, you should be able to feel it loosening. If it's real tight and it continues to slip in your fingers, try one of those rubber jar cap removers. It can help. But don't use any tools like wrenches or pliers, otherwise you'll damage the unit. Once it is loose, it will take about three full turns to get the top screwed completely off. And then once it's free, just lift it off and put it aside. Now, with the top of the tank off, you can put some CBG juice into the tank. Position the nozzle of the CBD storage bottle down into the outer portion of the tank, the portion between the glass outer shell and the central inner stainless steel sleeve, this portion here. Now note this, most CBD storage bottles have what's called a unicorn top. That's a plastic narrow nozzle that is designed to fit well into the tight spaces offered by most tank filling ports, and they work well with this tank too. So this is a unicorn top here on this bottle of CBD juice. Again, you want to put that nozzle between the glass wall and the inner core. You do not insert the tip inside the inner core, otherwise the juice will leak out the air vent if you do that. Once inserted, squeeze the CBD ca container carefully and watch the tank fill. You might want to stop squeezing once you reach half full so you don't initially commit to too much of a particular CBD product on your first use. You might decide after a couple uses that it's not strong enough or that you don't like the flavor, etc. So just put it about half full for now. You can always fill it more later. Okay, so this tank is about half full now. Now screw the cap back on. To do that, after you position the cap on the glass, you are going to have to push down relatively hard on the cap as you rotate it. That's because there's a spring mechanism built into this tank that tries to push the cap away from the seating threads. Once you push down and rotate, you will feel that the threads start to engage. It'll, once they engage, it will take about three more turns to get it tightened. Make sure it's tight so the tank won't leak. Now be patient. Wait 10 minutes with the unit sitting upright to let the coil wicking material soak up the juice to accomplish the priming. Wait that full 10 minutes before turning on the unit. After 10 minutes, you will turn on the unit. However, after turning it on, do not actually fire up and take a draw. There are some important settings you need to make first. There are two main steps to these settings, and let's preview what those are first. First, you are going to sync the tank to the unit. I show that ahead. You only have to do that once when you install a tank. And then next, you're going to turn on temperature control and set it correctly. I also show that ahead, and you only need to do that once as well. And again, don't take a puff until both of those steps are done. Okay, let's first sync the tank. Again, you only need to do this once, but it is an important step. That sync is normally done automatically after attaching the tank when you subsequently power the unit on. It usually happens within five seconds of powering on the unit, However, due to some variability in parts and timing, a sink can stall out and you might need to intervene to get the sink done. So it's good to understand this and what's about to happen here. During the sink, here's what happens. The control unit tries to read and sync its electronics with the electronic parts in the installed tank. Specifically, the Aegis control unit electronically measures the coil resistance that's inside the tank, and then once it measures that, it inserts that measured resistance value into the control unit setting. This is important to have happen so that you can achieve accurate temperature control. Okay, if you're ready, start by turning on the unit. Again, to turn the Aegis unit on, simply rapidly press the top button five times in a row. You should, see the LCD, you should see the LCD screen light up. By the way, if you want to turn it off, repeat that. 
rapidly press the top button five times in a row. Now, after you power on the Aegis control unit with a new tank on it for the first time, within five seconds, you will see one of three things happen on the LCD screen. What usually happens is this. You will see a white background and in fine black text, some wording. Now, you see the white screen and the fine text I'm showing here? If your eyesight is bad, get out your glasses to read this. It's quite small. Look for the message, new coil, as I show here. And then below that, a few coil resistance numbers will be shown. And then at the bottom of that white screen, it will display the words old and new. So if you see that, next what you want to do is immediately press the plus button below the screen and that will select new, which is what you want to choose. Now recall the plus button is the right button on the mini and it's the top half of the rocker button on the solo. Once you press that, that will cause the control unit to accept the new t coil and the tank and insert its resistance measures inside the control unit. The Aegis screen will then switch to a large number readout and you are done with the sync. It's complete. Now, if that doesn't happen, the other thing that might happen is this. Sometimes the sync is skipped because the Aegis thinks the tank is the same as the last tank installed on the unit or the same as its default settings. But you need to confirm that is right. If this is the first time you've installed this tank, it probably isn't right if you don't get the white screen and you're going to need to make some adjustments. So here's what you do. If after five or 10 seconds, you don't see the white background screen, I describe it immediately above, then you might see a large number displayed and under it, a list of readings. The top item in that list of readings will be la labeled coil. Now with a standard Inokin tank that we're using and the coil in it, if the number to the right of the coil says 0 0.50 or a number very close to it like 0 0.49 or 0 0.51 or maybe 0 0.48 or 0 0.52, then if it reads that, then your Inokin tank is already synced and you can skip the rest of these sync instructions, you're fine. However, if what I just mentioned happens, the number, you don't get a white screen, but you get a large number at the top, and then the coil reading number that we saw earlier is a lot different from 0 0.50. And it does not change within 5 to 10 seconds to read closer to 0 0.50. Then the sync has stalled and you should turn the unit off and turn it back on again and then follow these steps again. Now, normally that will make it work, but occasionally it will stall again. And if that happens, then next what you should do is completely remove the tank and reinstall it and then repeat these steps using the tests that I just showed to get the tank synced. Usually after a few tries, a tank will sync. And really, in most cases, it'll, it'll sync immediately. These extra steps I just described are just a precaution in case something goes wrong. By the way, after the tank and Aegis unit are synced, you'll never need to do these steps again unless you put a different tank on the unit or install a different kind of coil in the tank. You are not done yet, however, so don't fire up the unit yet to take a draw. Rather, next you need to activate temperature control on the unit. 